overflows how to avoid mechanical judging you will have to be constantly aware to drop this mechanical habit of judging you see a face and you have already judged ugly good bad or anything else this judgment has become so deep rooted we cannot see anything simply the mind enters immediately and this becomes an interpretation it is not a simple vision do not interpret simply see sit down in a relaxed posture or lie down close your eyes and allow your thoughts to move if you say bad if you condemn then you start repressing them then you are not allowing them to move independently that is why there is so much need for dreams because whatsoever you are repressing during the day you will have to release in the night and that which is repressed goes on forcing its expression it needs expression see so whatsoever you repress you dream dreams are cathartic in a way now modern sleep research says that you can be deprived of sleep and not much harm will result but you cannot be deprived of your dreams the old idea that sleep is very necessary has been found to be false instead of sleep dreams are very necessary and sleep is necessary only because you cannot dream without sleep researchers have developed techniques with which it can now be judged from outside whether you are dreaming or whether you are simply asleep if you are simply asleep thoughts will disturb sleep whole night long when you are dreaming they will allow it when you are not dreaming they will disturb the sleep and no bad result comes out of it but if they should disturb you when you are dreaming and allow you to sleep when you are not dreaming within 3 days you will begin to feel dizzy and within 7 days you will feel a deep uneasiness your body and mind both will feel it and within 3 weeks you will feel a certain type of insanity what happens it is because dreams are cathartic if you go on repressing during the day and if repressions are not allowed to be expressed they will accumulate in you and that accumulation of repression is insanity in meditation you are not to repress any thought but it is difficult because your whole mind consists of judgments theories isms doctrines belief system etc so one who is very deeply obsessed with any idea a philosophy or a religion cannot really enter into meditation it is difficult because his obsession will become the barrier so if you are a christian or a hindu or a jain it will be difficult for you to enter meditation because your philosophy gives you judgments this is good and that is not good this has to be repressed and that has to be allowed all philosophies all religions all ideologies are repressive because they give you interpretations 
they do not allow you to see life as it is they force interpretations on it in the name of meditation most of the people fall asleep therefore one who wants to go deep into meditation has to be aware of this nonsense of ideology just see a simple man without any philosophy with no attitude towards life just be a seeker one who is in inquiry in deep inquiry to know what life is do not force any ideology and above it do not force any ideology over and above it then it will be very easy for you to move into meditation this is why i say medit in for meditation you need not be religious anyone can meditate because of this the greatest meditator the world has ever known gautam buddha insisted that no ideology is needed no philosophy no concept about life is needed whether god is or not is meaningless irrelevant whether moksha liberation exists or not is also meaningless whether your soul is immortal or not is meaningless buddha was so much anti philosophy because anti philosophy can become the basic ground for a meditator to jump into the unknown philosophy means knowing something about the unknown without knowing it without realizing it it is just pre conceptions hypothesis man made ideologies do not judge let the mind flow easily and naturally remember this as a very foundational fact as the river flows let the mind flow easily just sit on the bank and watch the thoughts flow as if you are sitting on the bank of the river or on the ocean and waves are arising so to mind in the lake of the mind myriad waves arise just sit on the bank and watch the thoughts flow this is difficult in the beginning but there is no other way and this watching should be pure without any interpretation sooner or later when the water has flown when the repressed ideas so water represents the repressive ideas and it flows that means the waves of repression are flowing and when the repressed ideas have moved you will find gaps appearing between thoughts a thought will go and another thought will not be coming and there will be a gap between the two thoughts in that interval alone nothingness happens in that interval you have for the first time the glimpse of your real face the original face that existed before you were born and that will exist after you die when there is no other no society you need not have any face thoughtlessness is facelessness in that interval when one th- thought has gone disappeared and another has not appeared in that interval for the first time you know what is your reality what is your face the face you had when you were not born 
and the face that you will have after you die. That means a faceless face. All the faces in life are false and once you know the real face, you feel this inner nature which Buddha calls as Buddha Subhav. Subhav means nature, the nature of inner Buddha, not outer. When you come to feel this inner nature, even once, even with a single glimpse, you will be a different person. Because now you will constantly know what is false and what is real. Then you will have the criteria. Then you can compare. And there will be no need to ask what is real and what is unreal. The question comes only because you do not have what is you do not know what is real and what you know is unreal. Only through meditation, when you witness the gap between two thoughts, you will be able to learn what is a false image and what is a real, the authentic face. Of course, the mind is automatic. And whatsoever you have done so far has become mechanical or automatic, robot-like. It is hard to break this mechanicalness. This is sleepwalking, but this is essential. The first thing to be understood that this mechanicalness is a necessity of life and your body has an inner mechanism. Colin Wilson has called it as inner robot. You have a robot within you once trained. Once you are trained in anything, that training is passed on to the robot. You can call it memory, you can call it mind, you can call it physical mind anything but the word robot is good because it is absolutely mechanical, automatic, it functions in its own way. You are driving. Every day you drive to your workplace and come back. So after some time, when you have driven, you have known the, uh, the passage, the route to your office and to your home back, it is passed on to the robot and then like a robot like manner you drive to your workplace and return from the workplace to your home enough for now